Now on to <clears throat> multiple questions we've had in regards to building a track bike. I've got questions literally from all over the world asking, what should I have as a track bike? Wow, that is a, uh, that's a big question. So let's take a look at that specifically. And for example, let's just use my personal experience on how I got into track riding and racing and what I've ridden in sequence and why and maybe you'll see some affinity with that that'll give you some clues about what you might choose to do that before we actually get into that let's deal with the subject of track versus street bikes in particular when you go to the track and you're taking a track specific bike what should you have irrespective of the make the size what you should have on the street bike that goes to the track, if this is a dedicated track bike, you should have, obviously, suspension that's built to your weight and your ability, both in terms of the forks and the shock. It doesn't have to be aftermarket. It can be stock that's been reworked in being revalved or resprung or different oil, but the suspension must be fixed, first and foremost. You must then get gearing on the bike that works for the tracks you're gonna ride at. Now, that doesn't mean you have to change, for example, the chain and sprockets. On my 09R1, I have the stock chain and sprockets. I just changed the counter shaft sprocket, the front one, and went down one tooth, and that works fine. And I'd much prefer a much heavier and solid chain for a track bike than a race bike. On a race bike, I'm gonna go through parts and I'm prepared for that budget. For a track bike, I need it to last a while. So gearing. If you're not sure, talk to the local guys that ride at the track. What do they use for that specific bike? If there isn't a bike out there, say for example a Ninja 250 or an SV650 or an EX650N, then maybe in those cases you're going to have to look at it and go okay well what's the top speed and let's get a gearing chart off the internet and take a look at what i should do also forums are incredibly useful for that because there are people that have done the same thing and you are not alone so gearing is the second thing third thing will be tires so you must have track day tires. Does that mean race slicks? No, it doesn't. Does that mean brand new super sticky tires? No, it doesn't. What it means is at least get some race takeoffs. So that will mean you go to local race events, talk to racers that are racing, who are getting rid of their tires after 10, 12 laps that you could then use and burn those upon your track days. Some riders, given their ability as they're learning, can get six or eight track days out of a set of takeoffs. So at between $100 and $200 for a set of tires that were originally $500, that's a great investment. <clears throat> and you need good sticky tires for the track. So that will be the third thing. Lastly would be making sure that you have good brakes. That means making sure your rotors are in spec in terms of width, that your brake pistons and calipers are clean and spotless, and that you have good brake pads in there. Do you need to spend 400 bucks on brake pads? No, not really, because you're learning and you need to figure out many, many things about going around the track. You don't specifically need to learn braking. So in that instance, I'd go ahead and say, Put some double H pads on, use those, go through them, clean your rotors every time you put new pads on, and you're good to go. And the last thing is maintenance. Every time you go to the track and you come back, you need to lube and adjust the chain. You need to check your engine oil. I usually change mine every two visits to the track, which works out to be on average every 500 miles. You also need to check the bike for example, steering head bearings. You also need to make sure the rear wheel is aligned. You need to make sure the front wheel is correctly aligned and positioned between the forks and that forks are not pinched. So your scale of maintenance in terms of frequency is huge and you need to be prepared to invest the time and energy and tools into maintenance when you're getting a, a track bike. So now we've got that out of the way, what should you get? Well. I started with an FCR 400, learned to ride the wheels off that, then went to an SV650 production bike, 
which I basically took the license plate off, taped over the headlights, threw some numbers on it and raced it. Then I went up to an SV650 Superbike and raced that and then went up to 600s. And at 600s, I felt I had found a bike that I was quite happy with. I did not need to go up to thousands, even though I would race those in endurance races, for example. It wasn't an issue. So I learned how basically not to brake in terms of corner speed because it's 400, how to brake judiciously in trail braking to set your entry speed, how also to get tucked into a bike so that you minimize the air resistance. And then lastly, especially with a 400, I got that because I didn't want a massive tire budget. So I would go through three sets of tires a year over eight races. And that was when I was learning. So I apportioned the money correctly in terms of what did I need, what did I do, how much money was I going to allocate to things, etc. Now, moving up to a SV650 Superbike, man, I would go through tires every race weekend. That's expensive. 500 bucks a weekend on tires is not cheap. And if you were to go to a thousand, you'd be going through two sets of tires a weekend. So there's a budget factor here to look at and go, okay, what am I willing to pay for based on the horsepower of the motorcycle? So that's your first choice. You can also go a different route. You can also go through a program like Brian Bartlow's Feel Like a Pro where you rent the bike. You just show up with your gear for a few hundred dollars. I think it's 250 or 300. The bike is prepared for you. You get on the bike, you ride the bike. When you're done at the end of the day, you go home and there's various options with his program of data suspension and all kinds of other stuff so there are programs out there where you can if you've never been to the track simply rent a bike go out and have fun see if you enjoy it rather than use your own bike and risk your own bike on the track in terms of your own personal history what should you get for the track well if you've ridden thousands all your life going to a 250 is not going to work for you it isn't should you look at a 750? Sure, it's got enough power where you feel comfortable, like you feel you have some horsepower. Should you try a 600? Well, that might be a little dodgy because you've got to wring its neck to make it work these days. Those kind of torquey bikes at 600cc are long gone, so you may get frustrated there. If you are out on a 500cc twin and that's what you use, then a 250 would make sense. A 600 might be interesting in that it's going to seem a lot faster, and it will certainly keep you working a lot harder too. So figure out what do I ride and how when I start, how do I want to start? And if you want to ride and start slowly, then something like an SV or a 400 or a Ninja 250, something like that will be great for you to get your feet wet. The other side of that, of course, is you're putting a lot of money into, it, into something you haven't tried and how much money are you willing to risk? It's not so much that you're playing slot machines here or rolling the dice on the craps table, but still, you're investing a lot of money into a track bike, so you want to mitigate that investment. An older SV, the first generation, at 2,500 bucks, you'll sell it for 2,500 bucks, so that's not an issue there for a year's worth of track experience to see if you like the track. And trust me, a lot of people don't. It is too daunting for them going that fast. So in investment terms, figure that out too and factor it into the equation. But more than anything else, if you are factoring and getting a track bike, keep it in line with what your goals are and reverse engineer it. Look at the cost of the motorcycle, the cost of the maintenance. Do you need any upgrades to the motorcycle? How much is that gonna cost? What is it gonna cost you? To get there, what is it going to cost you for tires for the year, etc. And build all of that up into a budget and then honestly look at what you think you want versus what your finances tell you you should get. Because ultimately there's nothing worse than being frustrated and having a situation where you run out of money and you can't ride the bike anymore because you can't buy tires. Or you need to change the sprockets because they're worn out. So. Thanks very much for all the questions in regard to that. It's a really good question that we get all the time. If you have any other questions, please send them to me via Facebook and Dave Moss Tuning, or alternatively, leave them here at Catalyst Reaction SBW on YouTube. Thanks a lot.